Hello world, this is a lock picking dev. Today I have master locks models one and three. Over here is the commercial model number one. As you can see, I already have them all taken apart and gutted, but for the sake of making it a lock picking video, let's let's pick a lock real quick. This is a um, master number one. There we go. All right, let's move on with life. So yeah, I have a master number one in the middle and a master number one commercial over here to the right. And the difference is um, not really hardly much at all. Um, the plugs here, just slight difference. Is that the focus there? There we go. Slight difference in the, uh, the housing there. This side has a flat portion and they look to be just uh, uh, finished just slightly differently. Oh, this one has the flat side on that side. Okay, so yeah, maybe they're just exactly the same. One just has a different finish on it. Um, otherwise, let me think, uh, both plugs are exactly the same. So those are the same, and the actuators are the same as well. Let me show you how they work. So here's the actuator of the model number one on the right. The plug actually, the tailpiece actually fits down and moves that piece right there that you see on the bottom right. And this is the part that you can see the ball bearings will fit into at the bottom there. So when it turns, it'll lock it. When it's open, the ball bearings fit in there and release the shackle. And here's how the body looks as well. So both the bodies of the one and the one commercial are exactly the same. Uh, like I said, everything's the same about these. So I, uh, from my experience here, I don't know the difference between the two at all, besides the name and uh, the nickel springs for the, for the commercial. The springs are nickel for those, whereas the normal number one are brass. But here's the body, as you can see here, the different plate sections here from the bottom where the core fits in right there. Then here, here's more of the middle, and here's more of the top. On the top here, the very top of the lock, so here's where the focus, there we go. So here's where the shack would go down in here. Underneath it is another uh, little uh, half moon cut that where helps control the um, the actuator and how far the actuator turns so um, when it's this is the bottom part that's facing or the part that's facing up and remember this side's the part that our plug fits in so this will fit in right there and this will be turned enough to where this is tensioning off the inside of the lock through that little hole right there and I'll demonstrate it that little opening right there and so then that's what kind of uh, controls where our actuator can turn. And let me show you that. So I kept the uh, model number one commercial put together. Let's see that is. There we go. And let me get a, a little scope light on it. You can see get that the focus there. You can see the plug fits right here. The tailpiece of the plug fits right at the top port part right there. And so it'll actuate off that little uh, nub in the bottom right. And also it's worth noting that that nub, this will focus real quick. You can see how it holds the spring right there too. Right there, the spring is uh, held into that piece right there. And so the other part of the spring is up into this area right here and that works out because that's the short side of the shackle and this is the long side of the shackle so that short side will never hit that spring little spring area right there and so that yeah that fits right there and then if we had uh, our housing on whatever that would fit right in right there and now you can see how the plug would fit in there and the tail piece of the plug right there would fit right directly back there and if we would turn it let's see if I got something I can reliably oh that's gonna be in the way isn't it 
Yep. Well, that sucks. I do it with that. There we go. Yeah, it almost released, but yeah, you get the picture there. So you can see how it can turn, and that spring in the back then gives us our our kind of rotation or our spring kind of rotation on our plug there. And that's basically it with the the number ones. So yeah, not much difference between the commercial and the normal number one. Let's move on to our master number three over here. Oh, before we go, it is worth noting, yeah, the pins are all standard um, for the number ones on both the standard number one and the commercial number one. So yeah, on to our master number three over here. Um, immediate difference about the number three is that they're starting to use more of a uh, standardized kick style, kick style housing. Um, the, they still crimp it on both sides, just like these other ones over here. Just like the number ones, you can see on both sides it is crimped. So you have to align the bottom of the keyhole uh, with one of the crimp sides. And then what I did to help get it out <clears throat> is uh, get that plug out as I took a big pair of pliers and I squeezed it that way I could push it through because it allowed these crimp spots to kind of open up a little bit for me. So a little tip there. But yeah, so our, our number three over here, basic cylinder um, uh, housing, it looks like the pretty much the same type of same type of plug. So nothing really noticeably different about these. And um, the pins as well. Looks like the bottom pins may be, may be nickel. So maybe that's a little bit of an upgrade of, of some sort there. Um, I think those might, those might mark differently. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, those are definitely different types of pins, so not the normal brass ones that we're seeing unless they're just coated. And the most notable um, difference with the Master Number 3 is the actuator action. So it is a, it is a wafer style. There we go. You can see that there's a wafer on top right there and it pushes off that um, spring right here that spring is not inside of a groove so the this part of the actuator is so it's inside of this side's groove hole and just below it there is another you can see that little side part of it this piece of the other wafer right here um, down below Sorry about that. And down below there. And so that one is pushing off this shackle side. But you can see that they are being just better lighting in general. You can see they're being well that's just a shit flashlight. Here we go. Sorry about this. There we go. Much better. I'll get the focus. There we go. So you can see the spring at the top there that it is um, pushing off of. That is our actuator spring right here. And there's another actuator spring. You can see a bit of it until we lost focus right there, pushing off the bottom uh, actuator wafer. And the way it works is there's this post going straight through the center. This post right here sticking straight up. Just stay focused for me, shit. There we go, sticking straight up the center right there. And when we turn that, it'll move this actuator this way and they have one below it that way because it's stuck right between the two actuators. So you can see the bottom one right there and the top one right there. I'm gonna show you how that works. So on the bottom here, here is the, uh, the post that I was talking about. It is this middle part right here along with this ring on the outside. So you can see how that part moves. That is our post. And here's one part, one wafer, and the other one spring and spring that way. So when we have our plug, our plug fits right in there in that hole. And so when we turn it, I might have to hold this wafer a little bit. Make sure we get it focused first. 
So let me turn it. Come on. Just that damn, the damn shackle on the way. There we go. All right. So when we turn it, it moves sideways like that, and it allows that release. And then we can lift it up. There we go. Yay! And our <laughs> our actuator wafer didn't fly out because usually there is. Um, I took the top off of this as well. So usually there is a top on here, clearly, um, holding that down. So there we go, those are our actuators. And I'll give it one more little nudge right here to kind of demonstrate. Right there. See how that moves in and releases that side and the one below would do the same thing. There we are. So, big notable difference between the um, Master Number 1s and the Master Number 3s is the, um, the actuator type. Yeah, screw the focus, not working on it. But yeah, the actuator type, you can see uh, one has a, just a full solid pillar and one is made up of wafers and springs. Um, otherwise, yeah, they're all standard pinned. There we are four pins in all of them. All right, I hope you found this video helpful and um, hope it uh, maybe inspires some other people to take some stuff apart too. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.